the fascinating and mysterious world of psychedelics and psychedelic medicine has been expanding rapidly over the last several years, specifically in the area of research on the effects of these powerful substances on depression, anxiety, PTSD, and other mental illnesses. As I've said in previous videos, but I will say again now, I have extensive experience with most psychedelics, including psilocybin, LSD, and more recently, over the last year, ketamine which will be the focal point of this video. I chose discussing my clinical sessions of ketamine for a couple of reasons. First of all, for legal matters. Ketamine is legally approved by the FDA for treatment of clinical depression and chronic pain. Now, I wouldn't say that I've necessarily ever been severely depressed, although I have experienced intense bouts of emotional dysregulation, trauma, extensive loss in my life, and a lot of the time just an overall nihilistic attitude toward the world. Another reason I chose ketamine was because unlike all the other psychedelics that I've done, it was by far the strangest and most powerful. And for those of you interested in doing these clinical sessions or the treatment of depression, or for those of you that have done it, you can understand that unless you have done it, it's hard for me to explain in words what it did for me and what I experienced. So my intention with this video is to explain the process of getting approved to do the treatments, the cost, and obviously the experiences themselves. Before we get going, I have to be that guy and just ask you to subscribe to the channel, maybe support me on Patreon. It would help the channel grow as I am uh, transitioning more into video content outside of music. First of all, let's start with what is ketamine. Ketamine was originally synthesized in the 1960s as an anesthetic for surgeries and animal operations. In fact, most people who get surgery today, high doses of ketamine are still used for that anesthetic purpose. Ketamine has also been used as a street drug, which I would highly not recommend unless you know exactly who you're getting it from and what you're getting it from. However, it was discovered in the 1970s and moving forward, which is what originally led to the research in the first place, that in smaller doses and infused over an extended period of time, ketamine acts as an extremely potent hallucinogenic, providing the patients and people who take it a dissociative effect. Now, dissociation refers to the feeling or sensation that you are outside of your body looking in. This obviously led scientists and researchers to begin to want to understand the possible effects on the human psyche in relation to traumatic brain injuries, traumatic experiences, PTSD, and other mental illnesses. And as I will try to describe, it was very indescribable, <laughs> if that makes any sense. So why was I interested in doing it? Well, the journey to self-discovery and coming to fruition of your highest self is paved with many difficult and strenuous roads that you have to walk and mountains you have to climb to get to the point where you not necessarily arrive but you understand. I'd had many intentional ceremonies with psychedelics in the past but what I noticed for me is that I understood the trauma and I understood what I went through but I was still viewing it through the same lens and from what I heard about ketamine it really sparked my interest to want to do it and experience it for myself. So I'm based here in Scottsdale, Arizona and what I had to do first of all get approved for it so you go in. I'm not a huge fan of these types of uh, approvals given that you only have an hour with this stranger that you just meet so it's kind of impossible for them to make a diagnosis in one way or the other. However, that's how the process is done. We did the adverse childhood experiences test which is something I'm very familiar with in my education and also just in my own personal research which uh, basically summarizes your traumatic experiences on a 1 to 10 scale. Mine was obviously a 10. After answering a few more questions they approved me for the treatments and they recommended eight sessions done over the course of the year. The first first three being done in the first week. That's called the stabilization phase. And just to get this out of the way, does insurance cover this? Some do, some don't. I think that the further the FDA pushes these treatments forward and the more mainstream they get, more insurance options will become available. Let's get to cost really quick. They're pretty expensive. If you don't have insurance, I was paying $500 a session. Following the approval, you go in for your uh, initial first session. And how they do the infusions is through an IV and you're in a very comfortable room. There's a nurse in the room supervising with you and a person that you trust, obviously, because you want to have that person there for emotional support. When you go in for your first initial infusion, they inform you of everything, what to expect, the treatment plan, etc. Again, they recommended eight treatments for me over the course of a year. They inform you that as the treatments move forward, they will continue to increase the dose. The first session, I was extremely nervous. I also don't like IVs or needles in my arms, so that uh, that was like the hardest part. I'll do my best to describe the experiences and uh, describe the infusions as briefly, but as in depth as I can. The first session, the onset of the ketamine was, it kind of felt like you were going under. Again, that's what it's primarily used for as an anesthetic, but it's that similar feeling where you're about to go under and you lose pretty much any 
the ability to move your physical body. It's so much in your head that you can't really feel your body. And I remember at the, at the initial onset, it was just this overwhelming feeling of that I knew everything. I've, I've recounted these experiences in journals, but it's not the same as trying to tell it to a camera in any sort of articulate manner. I was doing my best to surrender to it and surrender to whatever was happening. And I remember feeling the first time just a wave of emotions and also a conscious awareness that I was at the clinic, that there was supervision there. Like I was aware of what was going on. I knew what was happening, but I couldn't do anything about it because I was just in my brain and exploring in my brain. I would say sessions one through three were very cathartic and very emotional. I was taken to a place in my mind where if you imagine closing your eyes and having water drip all around you, it was almost as, I, as if I was waiting in this watery room. But in that room, I felt these emotions of the people that I'd encountered in my life. And the first three sessions were really devoted to experiencing what I felt with my family. Especially session one, I shed a lot of heavy tears and it was uncontrollable. It just flowed out of me. And then sessions two and three, I began to experience a divine connection to whatever we might deem as God. I've always been pretty skeptical about that existence. I've experienced God in my own definition and other things, but ketamine allowed me to have the closest connection to a higher power that I'd ever experienced before. And it probably sounds somewhat hard to believe, but that's just what I experienced. And whether it happened in my head or not, it doesn't matter. That deeper connection to the divine and like knowing that there was something, whether it was a chemical reaction or it was real, telling me that there was this presence of something that is completely compassionate and loving, which was profound for me. I was able to connect and communicate with whatever that was. It allowed me to see myself and the world around me through a completely omnipotent, empathetic lens. After the sessions are over, you kind of feel drunk, a little bit hungover, not like sick hungover, but a little bit lethargic. After sessions one through three, I felt very grateful for the people around me and very connected to uh, the world around me in, in a deeper way that I'd never experienced with psilocybin and other ones. Not that those don't have the same value or purpose, but it felt as though almost I was floating more freely. And it wasn't until sessions four through eight that I really understood, I think, what those things were. So sessions four through eight, again, they would increase the dose every single time. And I was becoming more familiar with the process and what to expect. So with each experience, I was able to surrender a little deeper to what was happening. And through the journaling and integrating, which the integration is a far larger part than the actual experience itself, but I'll get to that at the end of the video. What I felt in those was obviously the complete inability to move, complete disassociation from my physical body, complete bliss and authentic love, but also the most profound emotion that I found valuable in, in every single one of these experiences was what I mentioned before, was this ability to feel everybody's feelings. I felt like I could feel everybody's feelings. They all came into my mind. I was able to feel what they felt, feel what I felt when you know I lost my father or like my, my mother had a hard time being there for me when, when I was a kid or all the other deaths I'd experienced or, and then I was able to experience those same feelings for somebody else. And you, you just come out of it and it's so emotionally challenging because you're suddenly given this ability to be far more compassionate and far more loving during the experiences at least. And like, again, integrating that afterwards is a little more challenging. Nonetheless, it's a powerful experience. Additionally, as far as the hallucinations are concerned, if you imagine in one corner of your eyes, there's a little bit of light peeking through. That light was able to pick me up and move me to another, I call them rooms. But how it felt for me was that I was being lifted up out of my mind and being moved into other rooms and being dropped into these rooms. And each room was a different theme. There was a blue room, a green room, a black room. The black room was dark and sadness and I felt this intense sadness come over me, but also I felt safe in that sad space. And then in the blue and green rooms, it was more happy and more loving and more adventure. I was able to experience a wide spectrum of emotions and see past experiences of my life happen, but from a different perspective other than my own. And I was able to foster this ability to love myself through them, which was something that I'd never been able to do. I'd always just try to grin and bear my way through everything and then white knuckling my way through anger and pain and sadness. And the experience of ketamine was truly able to do that for me. The mechanism for how ketamine works is if you view the neurons in your brain and in the middle there's these roadblocks that are created from stress and trauma and loss and hard heartbreak, lifelong elevated levels of cortisol, whatever it may be, ketamine allows that roadblock in the middle to be broken 
and new neurons to be formed. It's not that it takes away your trauma or not, not that it takes away your pain, but allows you to see it from a different way. And that was the most beautiful part of the experiences was just being able to, to feel something I never felt for in relation to the feelings that I'd already experienced, if that makes any sense. Outside of the profound hallucinogenic effects, I was able to explore inside my conscience and connect to a higher power and anatomically and on an actual physiological level, change the structure of my brain and allow for new possibilities to happen. And ketamine is chemically and spiritually able to do that. Was it worth it? Yes, I think it was worth it for the experience alone. These experiences did stay with me for a certain period of time. It should be known, however, that over time, the effects do fade off and you don't have to do maintenance treatments, but it's recommended that you do. I'm actually due for a maintenance treatment now, but I, I think that I got all I needed from the experience. I feel like that's the best way that I can explain my experience. This complete wide spectrum ability to feel every emotion that is possible out there and be okay and at peace with whatever emotion I was feeling. And ketamine was able to provide that for me as well. Let's get to the reality. Did it cure me? Did it cure my depression? Did it cure my stress? Did it cure my emotional dysregulation? No, definitely not. Um, I don't think that there is such a thing that exists, but what it did do was provide me with not only a lens to view my trauma and experiences differently, but also provided me with the knowledge that I have a choice to choose something different. You don't necessarily need ketamine to do that. What ketamine can do is provide those neurological roadblocks to be removed and for you to choose a new path and a new opportunity to do and be different. So would I recommend this experience? I would say if you are a seasoned meditator, if you have had experiences with psychedelics before, I would recommend it under those circumstances. If you've never done that, I would highly advise you to experience things on your own first, you know, set and setting, doing it the most comfortable and safe and trusting environment that you can do it in. Because ketamine is a completely unique experience. It's completely different than anything else you would ever do. And for some people it can be traumatic if it's not done under the proper supervision. So it's something to be treated with intention. And as far as the integration process is concerned, I highly recommend journaling and also coming back to the experiences. Like there's a lot of moments now where I'll feel like I'm about to get angry or and obviously sometimes I still get angry or I still get sad. But what I'm able to do in certain moments now compared to how I was before, and this is in combination with work outside of ketamine as well, but what ketamine has allowed me to do, I think, is to pause more and observe more. And I think that that is invaluable and you can't put a price on it. For me, that's what it did. I'm not saying that would do that for you or that's necessarily what you need it for. Overall, I am very happy that I did the eight sessions. I'm happy that I saw it through. I'm grateful that I got to deepen my connection with something that I didn't think was there or could be there within me and also understand and integrate myself in a more healthy and positive way into my surroundings and the people around me. So overall, ketamine is a hell of a drug and it's something to be treated with caution and respect. Well, I hope that at least to some degree summed up my experience and if you're thinking about doing this, feel free to leave questions in the comments that I can respond to or uh, message me on Instagram at Casey Ryan Music and uh, that's it. Mm -hmm.